Civic Entertainment Gossip Television. It's your girl Liz, and I'm here to call a spade a spade. On this show today, I have some special folks with me. Starting on my left, please introduce yourself. My name is Reggie Rafer. It's usual. I'm here to call a spade a spade. My name is Oge Nwabuze, and I'm here to call a spade a spade. Oh shit, talk the bass. And I'm here to tell the truth <laughs> and nothing but the truth. Wait, here to call a spade. I'm here to tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So in one minute, I want you all to give me the first couple of things that comes to mind when you hear about the topic of sex education and parenting. Reggie? Okay, um, being a parent myself is... Like you said, it's a very important thing that we as parents have to take very importantly. You know, I think that not the earlier, the most appropriate time. Um, there's no fixed time that you would say is appropriate. It depends on the development of your child. You understand? As you relate with your child and you see that they're developing at a certain pace, you as a parent should have the responsibility of knowing when to introduce sex education to them and it has to come in phases you do not just begin to talk to a seven-year-old or pretty much even a six-year-old daughter about the kind of things that would be more appropriate for a teenage daughter but like i said it's always better for you the parent to be the one who's going to teach them sex education than for them to learn it outside thank you for that reggie um, okay, I'm going to skip you briefly because you're also a parent. <laughs> I want us to get a take on someone who's not yet a parent. Growing up, um, for, as a young boy, you were taught to, well, I was taught to be gentle when it comes to girls, treat women with respect and, and, and whatnot. So, but I wasn't really taught on sex education, not until I got to school. Maybe in fifth, sixth grade. maybe fifth, sixth grade is when I learned about true like sex education, and you know they they bring out a TV, show you a movie, they even show you a little bit of pregnancies. That kind of scars you. They kind of try to scare you a little mm-hmm. bit. So you uh you know sex uh, transmitted diseases and stuff like that. Uh, so it wasn't it wasn't until around twelve, thirteen is when I really learned stuff and you know i never came back to my parents about it because you know in in a nigerian household sex talk is a little bit taboo i know when uh now probably in a couple years when i start having children and stuff i know i hope i know that i can maybe just talk to them a little bit it's gonna be awkward it's it's cringeworthy a little bit (laughs) if i have daughters um i'm praying for sons of course but you know (laughs) if daughters come along uh, teaching them and reminding them that uh, boys are probably at a young age. I will remind them that boys are yucky. And then, like Reginald said, once they get to a certain age, you know, remind them that boys only want one thing mm-hmm. at the end of the day, um, and make sure that they right, make the right choices. Uh, with the with my sons, of course, I will of course remind them to respect women, see how I treat my, their mother, and hopefully they go out into the world and treat women the same way I treat their mother and see how I treat their sister. But I will still remind them, you know, um, it, it, it it's you, you can't tell a, when a child turns into a teenager and they're horny and stuff like that, you can't really tell them don't have sex, you know. Mm. So at that moment, I probably will be telling them, you know, protection and, and, and safe sex um yeah yes i'm a t- i'm still a typical nigerian father i'll still remind them that you know sex is still yucky but uh you know but i will teach them about safe sex as well too okay. thank you and now over to you Oge, as a mom what okay. comes to mind Here, sex education um the thing is when we hear when people hear um sex education what what comes to mind most times is um copulating they think of it in the raw sense of it but sex education is beyond intercourse sex mm-hmm. education is some it's one of the primary duties of every parent and i believe that you should introduce um sex education to your children as early as two the moment they start talking start to teach them and how do you go about it you start to teach them about themselves about their body parts because 
one of the things that we, the older generation, um, couldn't do was talk about, um, call our private parts their real names. Yes. You know, we, we it was even like a taboo to even call your own, like say, breasts or penis mm -hmm. or vagina. These are body parts like the hands, the leg. So it's it's the duty of us parents to to allow us to create a safe environment for our children to be able to come to us to talk to us about whatever be it your sex health. Mm -hmm. In fact, the earlier you introduce sex education to your children, better. the better for for them and for you too. Because then, as they get older, they can come to you about certain things, the body changes, the things happening to their body. Not like our days when things happen, you're scared to go talk to your parents. Yeah. And this, I think, this is very dangerous. Hush, hush, hush thing. It is. Hush culture. Yeah, it's like a taboo to discuss sex. Mm -hmm. And it's quite pretentious to me because everybody engages in sex. Mm -hmm. So... Why are we? Why why can't people talk about it? But we do it. Okay. Why? Why? It, and and then then one thing people fail to understand is that child abuse thrives in secrecy. Yes. When okay. your children are mm -hmm. not open enough to to talk to you about sex, about the things happening to them, or whatever is going on, you you're feeling them already. Mm -hmm. You're you're mm -hmm. and they, you're you're feeling them. Just know it. So I believe that sex education is very very important. Yes. It's one of the primary duties of every parent. Parents should feel free to talk to their children about uh, whatever is going on. And as they grow older, you know, you, you teach it, just like Reggie said, said, you teach them sex education in fa in phases, in different phases. Exactly. It's not the way you would introduce it to a two, three, four, five years old that you would introduce it to a teenager, your teenage child. No. Mm -hmm. As they get older, you have perhaps used um, words that they understand according mm -hmm. to their age people. I believe as soon as a child starts talking, very well. You well should, said. You should be able to, so that yeah. if anything is going on, they are able to speak to you about it. To you about it yes. um, as a woman, I totally agree with you because, you know, as a Nigerian that lives in the United States, you know, growing up as a young girl, sex was not a topic in the household. Mm -hmm. But one thing I will, I would honestly give my parents credit for is they taught you all your body parts. So it wasn't just this is your head, your shoulder, knees, toes, your hands, your stomach, but also your vagina and no one should touch you there likewise the little boy no one should touch them either kids should be able to identify parts that are not okay for other people to touch right and in doing so once someone touches them they're able to come to you like hey such and such touched me here and i felt uncomfortable so i have a question to throw back out at the parents especially um we can only speak for ourselves we can't speak for others but from the things we know in our society and our culture, why is it hard for Nigerian parents to teach their kids about their private parts? They expect you to know your mathematics like this. They expect you to be able to write properly. But when it comes to the topic of sexuality, you know, um, private parts, when we talk about sex education, it's not necessarily the act of sex because like you said, it's in stages, mm -hmm. right? Um, and this shouldn't be a one-time conversation. This should be an ongoing thing based on development. Yeah. Why is it so hard for Nigerians to start this early? Because, listen, a lot of us are leaving Nigeria to come to the Western world. Believe it or not, they're teaching gender roles and identity from preschool, kindergarten, up until grade 12. And... Let's all keep in mind, what you don't teach your children at home, someone else will teach them outside. So why do you think it's so difficult, even for Nigerians in the diaspora, to even openly talk about this? Early. Like you said, you believe age two, but most people are not even thinking that far. Or like, maybe I should start teaching this child about, you know, their private parts and what is acceptable and what's unacceptable. I think um it's um we have a a culture of um do I call it stigma stigma it's stigmatized yeah. yeah around around sex and I would like I said like the older generation would I really blame them they don't understand conscious um parenting mm. I think the younger generation we are being, we are we are learning to be very conscious about a mm. whole lot of things mm -hmm. they when they don't really know I I don't fault them so much because especially in Africa I think traditions culture a lot of things uh, the reason why we there's a taboo mm -hmm. surrounding sex in our in our culture 
So if mm -hmm. a situation whereby a woman seeing her men a menstrual period is seen as unclean, yeah, but there's nothing unclean about it's part of nature. It, it's, an, it's a natural, yes, yeah. yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's going to happen to every female child. So why is it a taboo for she's seen as unclean? Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's been demonized so much in the African culture that they find it very difficult to but and even when they want to introduce it to their children. It's done roughly. Exactly. Yeah. A lot of fear. They don't mm -hmm. teach you. Uh, um, they don't teach you what you need to know. Correct. They just tell you about oh, you made a guy, you get pregnant, you got. If hey, a guy touches you, know, you that's it. You know, they want to scare you. You know, don't even want you to even look. At, so you don't even look at a guy. <laughs> so I feel like mm -hmm. um, it's it's really going to take a, a lot. So it, this is indoctrinated in us. You yeah, it's not taking care of education. Yeah. education, like educating our where do you start from? Education. Why do you start educating people that are already in their fifties, sixties, seventies? Very yeah, true. You know, with mm -hmm. the younger generation, we that can have only to change exactly. It. We yeah. can only start now to educate the younger generation too. That there's nothing wrong with with you feeling a certain way. or your body is developing. There's not mm -hmm. okay. There is just one where uh, when you're a younger girl, maybe like thirteen, mm -hmm. the early bloomers. Oh, yeah. When they start developing, so fast. it's not late. You know, then, the exactly. mine, mine is like you know the day. Nigerians will but they'll, they'll make it look like oh yeah. because the guy is Someone touching, is touching you. you that is why mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it is not true mm -hmm. they do not understand they don't that understand. there are yeah. people who are early bloomers and some kids late, bloom late, late mm -hmm. now the children are being taught this in school Th mm -hmm. those days when when some girls start to see their their, um, their periods or start to develop earlier mm -hmm. than others mm -hmm. they are shy. And they're ashamed of it. They're ashamed of it. They yeah. put on double shirts. And yeah, because they don't want to feel like they, they look different. They look different. Other. The other girls are not wearing mm -hmm. anything inside. Mm -hmm. We're just they are they, so they, they it's the stigma, but it shouldn't be so. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be so. So I as for the older generation, I've, I've given up on trying to educate them. <laughs> but but the younger ones, it's our duty to to be more conscious as parents. I, I I try to practice conscious parenting. Mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. Even even though so it's difficult, mm -hmm. I try to unlearn some old things I was taught. Yeah. One of the hardest things to do is actually to unlearn, to unlearn something that you've been taught for over 30 something years. That you years thought was the right. norm. That you, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But, but now reading education, social media, a whole lot, there are so many mm -hmm. materials, so many things. People, you, you go online and teach yourself. There is okay. no reason for anyone to be ignorant right now. Okay. And for the sake of the younger generation, we know better. So if you know better, you should do better. better. Perfectly said. Yeah. Hold that thought. This is good. <laughs> but for the sake of time, we have to keep rolling. So, question for the men in the room. Okay. So, upbringing of young women or girls and boys tend to be different. Absolutely. Why? All right. Just like biologically, we are a male and a female is very different. Mm -hmm. They're also socially different. Mm -hmm. They're also environmentally different. Now, it's. I'm sure you know that biologically and socially a female develops faster than a male mm -hmm. you you could be you could be you could be in the setting grade as a girl and uh you you're, ten, you're tending to develop faster than the same male who are in the same grade as you are mm -hmm. it's a natural thing mm -hmm. it's a biological thing it cuts across culture wherever you are if you're an african or you're western wherever you are it's just a natural thing now, that also that also tends to the biological development of a boy and a girl. A girl is definitely going to be more conscious, mature of herself when she's about fourteen years than a fourteen-year-old boy. It's only on very very few cases where you would see a fourteen-year-old boy who thinks and acts in the same way as a fourteen-year-old girl. There's always that gender gender and basically biological disparity yeah. it's always ahead for a girl the girl is always ahead in development okay. biologically and um, mm -hmm. socially from a boy so it's and the society tends to play on that same line mm -hmm. as nature already nature is the first person who gives us that mm -hmm. then society also plays along that same so the, the same thing you would tell a girl of a certain age or grade mm -hmm. A boy of that same age or grade would not find it easy to comprehend or easy to understand or it, it would be like you're speaking jargons to him at that certain stage mm -hmm. but a girl always be ahead i feel that the girl should always be given priority when it comes to things like that 
because just like I said previously, the development, biological development and societal development tends to favor the girl more than the guy. So that's why that disparity is there. Okay. So I think I need to restructure the question. Okay. That was a good explanation because oh, yeah. that needs, that's, that's the tone. But in for sexual education, whenever I feel like we're Nigerians in the room, whenever a Nigerian parent has to talk to their children about sex, I feel like girls are usually at the party at like, and eh, don't be sleeping, don't be doing that, you're gonna bring shape for the family, you're gonna get pregnant. Pregnancy is not the only thing that's out yeah, there. Come on from sex, yep. And abuse, because I feel like we come from a hush culture. Mm -hmm. Abuse is not only towards a girl too. Little boys are being abused too. Let's talk, let's talk, let's just get into abuse in general. Okay. And the importance of why you need to teach your children about sex education from early. Like you said, you already started at the age of two mm -hmm. with your children. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have uncles and aunties. This person is your uncle because they're an older person in, okay. in society, but they might not be blood related. Everyone is not your uncle and auntie. Okay? And I feel like coming from a cultured background, parents are very relaxed when it comes to, oh, that's your uncle and auntie. It's okay. Go over Shut there. Them. You can stay there. Oh, they let them carry you. When I have kids, no one is sitting on anyone's lap. No one's I don't even want to know. Period. People still do that now? They still do it now. Mm -hmm. yeah. don't, don't. And we come from a hush, hush culture. I feel like for those who weren't taught, I, I wasn't taught that early, but I came to the country early where, like Joe, you mentioned in school, we were taught these things. In elementary three, that's when they were like, oh, women have ovaries, you have a uterus. Here's a sample always pad. And I was just looking at them like, what are we even talking about here? Do you understand? And I went home to my mom and I'm like, this is what they gave us in school. I gave her the pamphlet. I gave her the pad. And she's like, who gave you this? Did you go into my thing? I think I was like, no, it's from school. You know, and she's like, what are they teaching you? Okay. For me, my mom's a great mom. Mommy, if you're watching this, yeah, great mom. But knowing what I know now, that was a little too late in the game because some things should have already been addressed earlier on, even if I couldn't comprehend it so I can connect it as I'm learning it. Like, oh, let me mention something like this okay, this is why she's saying X, Y, and Z. Because remember, I stated earlier, what you don't teach your children, someone else will, Whoa. and it might not be the right information. Absolutely. So let's talk about abuse in our culture, because it's taboo too, and it's not talked about. A lot of broken adults are a product We're of abuse. abuse. Right from, yeah. When a man grows up, be homosexual. We're looking at him like, is it spirit? Da, 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 da. No, someone could have abused him as a child. And they grew up broken, like, they desire a man, they don't want to, but that's a struggle that they have because of that experience. So, we'll start with you. What is your take on the upbringing with young girls versus young boys? And what is the importance of teaching them this earlier on rather than later or after a certain situation? Um, well, I don't, you know, the most easiest way I can explain it because when you when you bring up a boy and a girl mm -hmm. realistically if you if a boy is having sex he can't get pregnant there's no sign that he's having sex mm. a girl can get pregnant so it's it's uh like reggie said it's kind of like bringing a little bit of shame if a girl gets pregnant before marriage and stuff like that you know so as parents you are going to target the daughter more it, I know there's, you know, I be joking like before the show started, we and I joking said boys will be boys, you know, stuff like that. At the end of the day, a boy can he can get someone pregnant, but a boy could walk away from a child. He can a man can walk away from responsibility and everything like that. Naturally, a woman's not gonna walk away because it'll show. It'll show. She can have sex yeah. and she carries the consequences. She carries the consequences. That's why it's more target on the woman. If I have daughters. I'm telling you right now, I'm targeting my daughter. When I, I'm, yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> cane my son, but my my daughter, you know, because at the end of the day, it's the you know 
you got to think of the future, her bride price, all of that. You got to think of everything, <laughs> everything. What it, you know? She has to marry a doctor. She has to bring. <laughs> she has to bring good fortune to the family. All right. Here we go. My son, we'll, we'll, we can work things out with my son. You know, yeah. he can marry into a good family too as well. But that's really it. But um, I do want to talk to them at a young age because, like you said, abuse. Yes. If if mm -hmm. they're at a because all my children are going to be playing sports. If their coach is touching them the wrong way, they need to know that this is wrong. And they need to know that they can come to me. You know, you if anything happens, they can. You know, they might feel shameful. They don't. Mm -hmm. They don't understand. So because of things like abuse at like like they were saying at a young age, I would like them to understand what sex is. Even I start if, early. So it is ex mm -hmm. extremely early. So when I'm at work, like we live in a country where both parents are going to be at work. Right. Realistically, you can't live you can't live yeah. in this country and, and no matter how much the husband's making, no matter how much the wife's making, two income is the best income Absolutely. in the household. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, I know, you know, growing up in the Bible and everything like that, the man goes yes, kills the lion, comes. comes and the woman cooks and plants and stuff like that, but in this day and age, it's not realistic. It's not realistic. So, you know, you in at home you need to really pound it in their head before they go out. So you have a, so you have a peace of mind that they know what's going on they and know they're able to communicate Correct. that across Correct. to you right let me ask something to what the man have said um i don't think it is proper that we always prioritize um the, the girl child every time we're talking about sex education mm -hmm. because in the, at the end of the day it's still a guy that's gonna get her pregnant. Mm -hmm. So, um, like, and and the sad thing is, I've spoken to many men who um, were ab abused as children, mm -hmm. and the sad thing is, men don't really take this abuse as seriously as men. Why is that? Because it was done by another woman. Sometimes by an they, older woman. Exactly, and then they they take pride. Okay, there was, like, was, was a social discourse like thing mm -hmm. where they're talking about, and then these guys were proud that they. Yeah. I'm like, no, you you were a victim. You were abused. Be, you shouldn't be feeling cool that someone who yeah. maybe your auntie or someone who was meant to take care of or your you older was, sister. You were being prior. abused. But, but, exactly. So these these are the reasons why men don't really prior. I, I see. I and you're right. The lack of honor. Like, yeah. have a it shouldn't be like, it, it, it is shame when it is a girl it's who's, not, who's it's, abused, yeah. but when it's a boy, it won't be like, ah, fine. Like, ah, big boy. It, won't be fine. Like, it shouldn't even be. It like won't that. be fine because it's going to affect him psychologically. And they become promiscuous. Thank you. They do. Like most of the guys, most of the damaged men we know today, check their history. Yeah. Check what was done to them. The abusive the men, abuse. the ones who were who, who are promiscuous, the ones who have no control of their mm -hmm. sex um, mm -hmm. thing check their childhood mm -hmm. maybe they, they got to that point where they have this high libido because mm -hmm. it started from when they were young and nobody really so cared young. because mm -hmm. oh he's a star my boy now man now yeah. man be <laughs> you know this this there's this pride they take pride mm -hmm. there's no pride in a male, in a male nice. child yeah. being abused so mm -hmm. i feel like as i'm carrying the, my female child i'm carrying my sons too because Absolutely. you raise a good boy yeah. you, you this the society is safe for the girl child as well you can't Absolutely. just say oh okay yeah let's, let's no that's dangerous mm -hmm. it is even more good dangerous boy. when you're if like you're empowering the girl you're teaching her then you're leaving the, the boy to the wrong boy to when they are the ones with the strength exactly. with the physical strength i mean so at the end of the day the girl is still we are still running around and so I, for for everything to work out well we need to teach these children mm -hmm. Put them on the same scale. I'm not saying they are the same thing. Mm -hmm. Their physiognomy mm -hmm. can never be the Absolutely. same. Mm -hmm. Of course, they are not. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, when it comes to sex education, nobody should be left behind. Exactly. None. Not the boy, not the girl. As mm -hmm. a even if it is things concerning the sister, he should know about he should it. Know. So that when he's in class and he sees mm -hmm. a little girl who, oh, she's. Yeah. He wouldn't be like you. What's no, that? No, no. He, no. he would understand, he would that, understand like, okay. that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mommy told me about this. Mm -hmm. so, oh, so sorry. He would even be more empathetic towards her and what she's going through. Mm -hmm. Unlike a boy who was thought that mm, it's a girl issue. Yes, we think of Sammy with that one. So when he yeah. says that he's even going to gather with his fellow boys mm -hmm. to mock the girl, mm -hmm. and then he's feeling like, "What? I'm, I'm, I'm messy." Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. I feel so. Sex education should be both ways: carry both children, male, female. Et voila. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, and as you all know too, we live in an era of social media. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, these kids know the tablet, laptops, iPads they more than that. <laughs> they do. They know how to peruse through TikTok, you know, mm -hmm. YouTube, all of that. Mm -hmm. And you know, media is very sexual, like it's hypersexualized. It's very, very mm -hmm. hypersexualized. Most of the things that young kids are seeing, they want to go out and act. Mm -hmm. on Children it. are curious naturally. They are. 
So the essence of teaching our children these things early on is very important. Because as parents, right, for future parents and current parents, um, we all have our family values, right, that we want to implement or inculcate into our kids as they're growing up. And a lot of, I feel like a lot of parents fail when they think, oh, let's talk about sex because my child is now 14 and they have certain parts and I see them moving with my son has a girlfriend or my daughter has a boyfriend. To me, it's too late and you failed in that area because family values should be instilled early on. If you're a parent that believes, I'm not a parent yet, <laughs> but if you're a parent that believes in no sex before marriage, if you skipped adolescence, like childhood, and jumps right to an eighteen-year-old life. <laughs> eh, no sex before marriage. Do you think that eighteen-year-old is gonna listen to you? To okay. To the party. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Ladies <laughs> first. Like, I'm a Call us baby. Oh. I, I, I was reading about the statistics where they said in Netherlands, um, yes. sex education. Correct. Yes. It's been introduced very early, and that and Netherlands is one of the countries with the safest yes. sex life mm-hmm. so far because. There's no, there's no stigma, there's no shame around sex. Mm-hmm. So if your child is 16 and he says, oh, I want to start having sex, everybody goes, oh, no, God will put you going to, you know, hell. Mm-hmm. No. The parents tell you the, the safest ways. It helps you to engage in safe sex mm-hmm. when you can discuss this freely. Mm-hmm. It is more dangerous when a child can talk to you about sex because Absolutely. now they engage in all kinds of Everything. dangerous, carelessly, out yes. of ignorance. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I, I, I think... The, the earlier the better for everyone. Yes. Countries where this where sex education are being are being taught earlier on, the the, the people if you notice they, they, they practice safer sex than mm-hmm. let's say our country mm-hmm. where there, there there are a lot of kids falling pregnant because they mm-hmm. don't even know what's going on, mm-hmm. abuse is going on. They are scared to talk to their parents because okay this they, oh if I tell them now they're gonna know I, I, a man has touched me. Touched me. They start yeah. to feel like they mm-hmm. are the they are the bad. No, you're not. You're mm-hmm. the victim, mm-hmm. but they don't know. Because mom and dad have already told them that, oh, when don't a man you touches you, you, mm-hmm. you, so they don't even want to tell you. Mm-hmm. And this continues. And this, this, this abu- um, pedophiles, the, 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 the tribe and the secrecy, the child is giving, the child is afraid, the child is scared. Of the threat, so they I will kill you if you say something. Continue. Until mm-hmm. the child is grown enough to realize, listen, I've been the victim all this while. Most mm-hmm. times already too late. Mm-hmm. When they come out to talk about, oh, why didn't you say it one million years ago? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How could she have said it mm-hmm. all those well? So mm-hmm. I feel like the earlier the better. Absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. There, there, there's no doubt about that. Mm-hmm. Why we keep calling a spade a spade? I would like to add to this. We're a panel of very young, um, young panelists, right? Mm-hmm. Now we are at the point where we are because we had regular. African parents that yes. brought us up. <laughs> of course. Cool. And I'm going to say this, right? <laughs> if if we individually want to judge ourselves, mm-hmm. I want to be sure that everybody, we're going to give ourselves a pass mark. We came out well. Mm-hmm. We're very good adults. Mm-hmm. Now, why are we very good adults? Let's not forget the fact that these typical African parents of ours raised, up in a, raised us up in a certain way. Yes. Now, at this stage of our lives, we have come to infuse Western culture and knowledge into our lives. Mm -hmm. Now, from the point where we're talking about, we're talking from the Western knowledge we've gained and the typical African upbringing that we've had that has brought up to this stage of excellence where we are. Right. Now, I would want everybody watching us or listening to us to know that none of these two extremes are out of place. You get to a point where you need to merge these two to give us the best. And that is the advantage that each and every one of us have here. Mm-hmm. We've experienced a typical African mm-hmm. and we've gotten to know the Western the culture. Western culture. Yes. Now, we're not going to dis- 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 uh, discharge each and every- yes. any of them, mm-hmm. but we're going to merge them mm-hmm. and try to give us the best. So, mm-hmm. at the stage, I want to believe that each and every one of us here is going to get, have a hybrid yes. Yes, training exactly. for our kids. Absolutely. Because we're merging these this two cultures together mm-hmm. to get the best. Mm-hmm. Now, Oge just talked about early, early teaching. This yes. is something that we didn't early know. We didn't know 
from the African extreme. We of didn't know that. <laughs> no, but when we when we want to merge the Western, we know that yes, early education is very important. Mm -hmm. So we're not discarding that. Yeah. But at the same time, we're still going to infuse that African culture that says, yeah. you know, a lot of times. This African teaching that goes to the extreme, that tells you, don't let a man touch you. Don't let him. It is not to give you a wrong psyche. It is it just to let you know that you sin. Yeah. Don't let a man come close to you. Close to you. Yes. Don't even get space Don't even that. That kind of stay. action. Don't even give yeah. space. Whether in your actions or in your words, don't give space yeah. to a man to even come mm -hmm. close within your circle. Mm -hmm. Because the truth is that, just like the Bible says, resist the devil. Mm -hmm. The Bible does not say negotiate with the devil. No, no, no. Resist. When, if the Bible had said negotiate with the devil, it will tell you that let the devil come close to you. Mm -hmm. Then start mm -hmm. negotiating. Mm -hmm. Guy, how are we going to mm -hmm. do this? Let's sit on it. No. The Bible says resist the devil. Don't even let the devil come close to you. Mm -hmm. It is the same thing as what our African parents would tell us that don't let the man, if you touch you, you're pregnant. <laughs> you would see some young girls in Africa crying that <laughs> he touched me, I'm pregnant. Like, yeah. <laughs> you who knows better, you will now laugh as oh, an African parent has told her this. So, but the essence was this do not let, don't let your guards down. Don't let somebody come close to you. Mm -hmm. When we know this, then we begin to know that teach your kids to speak up. Yes. Recently, I had. I was talking with my four-year-old son. He made a comment. I think he was watching it on TV or whatever. And he said something about having a crush on somebody. So I was driving with him. I think I picked him up from school. So I'm like, I asked him, do you have a crush on anybody? <laughs> oh, sorry, my five-year-old son, soon to be six. He's going to be six by June. It, it took him a while. Then he started telling me, started opening up. He asked me, this is going to be a secret. I'm like, I promise you it's a secret between me and you. Yeah. I wouldn't you tell your mommy, it's just you and I. Mm -hmm. And he started telling me, two, more, two girls in his class, that he had a crush on. I swear to God, I'm like, to me it was interesting. Rather than be upset at him and yell at him, I don't know. Like, I made it look like we're talking about his favorite movie character. I'm like, that is great. Mm -hmm. This is the safe environment to talk about. Yeah, that, 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 make, 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 make the environment yes. safe for him to talk about it. Yes. So I asked him like, oh, you have a crush on her. So what did you do? He's like, yeah, the day I took snacks to school. So I gave her one <laughs> and all that. I'm like, you did excellent. It's a great thing to do. Yeah. So every day he comes back from school. I, I know the name of the girl. You Every know, day he school, I ask him about it. So, how, um, so, so, so person, how she do? Did, did you talk to her in school today? Did you do anything? Did you do? And days I don't ask him, he comes to me. It's about and, I have a secret. To, I, mm -hmm. I have a secret to tell you, and he tells me about the same girl or somebody else. So that's the environment I'm trying to build for him. Yeah, it helps to when, know when he's when, going astray. And when, when that kind of son mm -hmm. begins, his hormones begin, biological hormones begin to tell on him. Mm -hmm. He begins to get erections and all that. Who do you think he would he go and tell his friend in school? He'll come and tell he me. He'll come and tell me. He'll come and tell me. He created that space. So the space has long. been there for him yes. to have those kind of conversations. So Perfect. what the essence I'm trying to say is that none of these extreme cultures that we have come from is should be dis discarded. Mm -hmm. Hold on to this because, like I said, it is this typical African upbringing that has brought us to great adults that we are. Absolutely. I want to tell, I, I want to, no, whether like we to think of it or not. I would want, I would, 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 I would like to object because, let's be very honest, mm -hmm. if we take off the mask, yes, yeah, some of us are scared, some of us were trauma. Yeah, let, let me tell you, yes. a lot of us who were raised by mm -hmm. African parents didn't have mm -hmm. the courage to talk about some of the things that happened to us. And you know one thing about child abuse is that it doesn't happen, it's not strangers who abuse you oh, yeah. it's usually oh, the most trusted no. people the around you yeah. <laughs> do this. and you know because they are so close and then your parents have instilled so much fear the fear of the devil the fear of hell the fear of everything even the fear of the person you're living with that you're so scared to even come to them that oh look at what the, and this person knows that you are uh, your parents once they hear that they will Mm -hmm. So they don't. The person is yeah. riding on the fear, and then the the abuse continues. So mm -hmm. I, I, I think the the older parents, our African parents, they need to tone it down. They shouldn't. Yeah. They, I'm not giving them 100 percent the credit. They did well uh, to the best. I said it in the, the, the beginning. Yeah, to the yeah, best of their knowledge, yeah. they did yeah. what they thought was mm -hmm. best. Me now, I think I'm conscious, but my kids may think I don't even know better. Mm -hmm. So we, they, they, I, I believe they did what they thought was good for us. Okay. Me, I'm gonna do my. I'm not gonna say, oh, they did fantastic. Yes, that isn't the standard for me. The African parent way isn't a standard for me because there are things my son, my kids talk to me about that 
I feel so happy when they come to me because and my son once said it, mommy, you know, I can always talk to you because you're always nice. Why won't I be? Because I want him yes. to feel that way. He, he comes to you but any with thing, anything, every, every aspect of your life. You I get where you're coming from with the African you're giving yeah, because we have to give our parents kudos for trying. Definitely. But definitely in, terms, in other areas, we can give them that accolade that they deserve because it's good to grow up in a structured home. Oh, it, it makes you a disciplined individual. Which and we're naturally right? hard working. Yeah. Kudos to that. It's, it's inborn. But like she mentioned also, a lot of us are traumatized or broken adults. <laughs> because there were things that occurred in our childhood that we were not able to address, address yeah. accordingly. Versus the culture you're not trying to create in your home. Right now. Where it's like, let me cultivate this relationship early on Open with my kids. Yeah. Because once I start teaching you about your parts, where someone can touch and can't touch you, once that's violated, you can come, you know how to speak about it and you can come to me. And from there, as you grow and as I notice changes, I will keep, I'll continue to talk to you so that if there's any discomfort anywhere or any little thing, you can still quick to talk to me come to you. address it. And if someone, the parent should be the first point, the first point of contact, not a friend. People would Correct. rather a lot of people from our generation would rather confirm, Com confide in their parents, in fact, their parents yeah. because yeah. of that culture of fear yeah. around African parents yeah. and their over discipline, which is yes. okay. I mean, it's not how to listen to their kids well, and not re be so quick to react. Yeah, something might not be pleasing to your ears, but listen to what your child is saying because yeah, you once can. you react. What do you mean? Uh, they're never gonna come no, to they're never gonna tell you anything again because you overreact. Yeah. Absolutely. My son, before he tells you something, he said, Promise me you're not going to grab my My son told me, he tells me, my he tells me, Promise me you're not going to be And I try, once he tells me that, I recollect my brain. I'm like, Okay, no. Then he starts to talk. And then I I, I just told myself, like I said, it's like on learning what deep inside me, the African mother in me also wants to jump out and shout there, you know, like go crazy and wild. But then the others, the me that is educated, I want to, like, Okay, um, okay, so. I, I, I won't read. Mm -hmm. I go ahead to read on how to go about this situation. Mm -hmm. How do I address this? And I just feel like we're all learning. There's really no preparing. There is really no, 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 no manual. manual. We are all doing trial error. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, we're just yeah. trying our best. But as long as you are trying and you are doing your best to be there to be to be a present a present parent mm -hmm. to be there to listen to your children when they're talking mm -hmm. to you. Your children should be safe to talk mm -hmm. to you about abuse about things going on. I think you're on your way already. On okay. the right part already. Thank you all. So as we conclude, I just want to throw out one last statistic out there. Mm -hmm. Then we can chime in, give our opinions, and we can wrap up. So adolescents, this is age 10 through 19, okay. age group. Remember, 10-year-olds have sex. Oh, yeah. By the way. Okay. <laughs> so this, there was an article I read. It says, adolescents experience the highest risk for sexually transmitted diseases out of any age group in the nation. Okay, it also says, according to the national data collected by the CDC, nearly half of high school students have been sexually active, and half of all new sexually transmitted diseases occur among people ages 24 and younger. In 2014, people ages 13 to 24 accounted for 22% of new HIV infections. I think these are the effects of not yeah. of it, it, it's all part of not educating your child on sex. Early right? Because when you when you part of sex education is also teaching your child about sexual health. Health. How to engage in safe sex. Like I mentioned earlier, when when you talk to your child about sex and when your child is ready to have sex and they come to you, your first reaction shouldn't be bring Bible, bring really <laughs> holy water and start sprinkling all those things on your child. Yeah. Try to understand their sexuality. Be they gay, be they whatever whatever they want to like, Try to understand, this is your child, this is your human that you formed. So try to be empathetic towards whatever they are feeling. Okay, why do you want to do this? Explain to them the risk factors and why they should wait. Wait, if it is a if it is a female child, you explain to her the, the, the dangers of surrounding pregnancy, early pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Are you ready the responsibilities? By the time it's not like a war or something you, you get all aggressive and start yelling. No. When it comes to this, if you really to so avoid situations where because it is more dangerous when ignorant mm. people out of curiosity, oh it's just like oh that fruit that they said you should not go and eat. 
There must You're be something fantastic to about it. it. Yeah, it, it must be. It must be something. Yeah, you want to go. But when from time they've started telling you about this, the proper communication helps. It, you're patient enough to wait yeah. because now you know you, you can weigh your options very mm -hmm. well and you know what you're getting yourself into and mm -hmm. you, you know ignorance is no longer yeah. the next choose in that in that in such situation yeah that, that's that's very true from your statistics you read now before we even get to that adolescent stage of what you said mm -hmm. there has to be a point of from the two-year-old to the 10. your statistics started at 10 to 17 Five. right mm -hmm. from two to 10 that is the very most important aspect of a child's life that mm -hmm. the as the parents is. as yeah. a parent if you are not if you do not do the right thing mm -hmm. by the time they get to that 10 where that statistics mm -hmm. is being taken mm -hmm. it's either down south or down west mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now in all my conversations i always want to go back to the bible because the bible is the manual of life yeah. the bible says train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it mm -hmm. now the when he is old does not have a gender it could be when she is old she's old or when he is old but so long as you've done the first aspect training up the child in the way they should go it is a guarantee the word of god is yes and amen once you have done that first part i'm not saying your child wouldn't go out of the house and see temptation and not be Compare pressure will not be swayed left or right. But so long as that foundation of training, you have laid it, be rest assured as a parent, be rest assured that that foundation that you have created, whether he makes a mistake or not, God will direct them towards the right path. Okay? So there are wrong choices kids want to make sometimes. And because of the relationship they have with their parents, pay attention to kids who have good relationships with their parents. Yes. They try not to offend their parents. They yeah. try. You, that's so that's when, when you build that, when you build love, that and, love and this you know, for you to there are, th there are times when they are seated amongst... Okay, let me give you an instance with my younger brother, right? There was a time... I'm, I'm like way older than my younger brother. Mm -hmm. He's like, say, 14, 15 years mm -hmm. older. So he's... So I, 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 when I was a teenager, I used to just check the kind of friends he mm -hmm. rolls with and just to make sure that he isn't... So there was something he said in his text that stuck. He, his friend was like, oh, they should, they should go and drink and get her. And you stop like that. And he's like, can you in my house there? There's all these booze and stuff. But... I just I'm not I'm I yeah. don't I it's not, not really moved by it. I'm not moved you by it. They're not in my house. My mm -hmm. my parents they're they're like, I've seen it. I've exactly. it. So, yeah. You know, I just told my mom, you know, this boy, I am sorry, he didn't even know. Okay. I just read this, I just yeah, I'm mm -hmm. I'm I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean notice. I'm not <laughs> Yeah, he missed it. <laughs> but, but yeah, because I really do. I'm yeah. also gonna be like that with my kids. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry if you have a laptop or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, they all have um family link. You should oh, know, yeah, about, I know all their laptops is connected to my phone, so I know what you're browsing. I know what you're what doing. You're very and, good. Yeah. So I used to do that with my younger brother. So he didn't even know I went through this, and it, it made me love. I like. I felt so happy that. Mm -hmm. People were telling him to go do some stuff that he didn't want to do. And he's like, mm -hmm. see, in my house, nobody's going to stop you. It, mm -hmm. they, 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 my parents laid this thing down. Open. It's open. Yeah. They, they, you know, they we grew up in a Francophone country. You know, the French people like mm -hmm. drinks a lot. Mm -hmm. So, it's like, it's not really something I'm phased about. Mm -hmm. But his friend was a, he's a Muslim. His parents don't know he drinks. Right. He, his, they don't know he drinks. So, it's for him, it's like, a, it's cool. It's something he wanted to explore. They were basically 14, 15 years yeah. then. But he was the part of that. He was the, so yeah. he wanted to see what it was all about. Just exactly. like telling a child, don't touch the fire, don't hold near fire. And the child, like, to, the child wants to know why you're why, why, stopping why are you telling me yeah. that. And it's a fully explaining, like, hey, if you touch fire, it's burn you. what's going to happen to you. <laughs> You know, you don't pay the matter. You can't tell someone don't do something. They're going to want to keep no their interest. It's, 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 it's a human it? nature. Yeah. It's a human nature thing. It's not wherever the region. That's the reason why Eve tasted the fruit. Absolutely. Even when they were told, do not, not taste the fruit. Exactly. A human would always want to see if I go against what you have said, what will happen? What what will happen? happen? But when you laid it all open there for them, yeah. and they know... This is what will happen. This is what, why. Yeah. This is what's going to happen. These are the consequences of... Actions have consequences. Oh, so, if you involve that, yourself in this, this is, is going to be... And I'm still going to be your mom. I'm not going to run away, but you are going to bear the, the brunt of whatever you do. That is, so, that is also very, very important. Mm -hmm. Teach kids that whatever action you take, there's going to be consequences. Sure. A lot of people do not know the consequence of actions they take. Of course. A, a little boy does not know that if I have sex, a teenage boy does not know if I have sex, there's a consequence. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be an early father. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if she gets pregnant, a little girl does not really grasp 
the yeah. full, the Picture. entirety of the con the mm -hmm. consequences of our action. Mm -hmm. I'm in school, yes, I'm in high school, that, that, that. I get pregnant in high school. It's going to stop my education. Mm -hmm. It's going to stunt my growth. And people mm -hmm. also look at you. I'm going to be protected. Even it's societal, yeah. whatever it brings to you. you you're going to start shouldering responsibility. Yeah, start shouldering responsibility. I should, I should not be shouldering. You should be thinking about just right. yourself. So the, <laughs> ending, the ending with these kids, you lay it out for them, like straight up. Lay it out for them straight up. Mm -hmm. One thing that helped me develop this, all right, was my the upbringing my father gave me. My dad was a retired military officer in Nigeria. Now, a military officer, you know how stern they are, how very disciplined they are. When he wanted to discipline us, right, he opened the Bible for us. He would give you the Bible and say, read a certain verse from the Bible. The verses that say, spare the rod and spoil the child. I'm sure we all know that. A child left to himself bring that shame to his mom. Like the Bible is there, the whip is there. Immediately you finish reading that verse, he tells you, so you know I'm disciplining you, right? <laughs> so I've just read the Bible. I've left the Bible. So in my mind, I'm like, I'm doing the word of God by disciplining. <laughs> so I'm receiving that training with gratitude in my heart that, yes, this is what my father is doing. Yeah. So we need they, they need to know these things laid out for them. Mm -hmm. And let us not shy away from the typical discipline of a child these are the things that the Bible mm -hmm. they spare the rod and spoil oh, the child i'm not big on the rod part i'm, I'm not spare, i'm not no, big on the rod no, part. the rod the rod, the rod, the rod is not dependent. typically me yeah a rod yeah or wait Over here we say, I, I, i'm grounding you thank right. you yeah right so you people take the bible so far i don't want to it no. that's so practical it's not it doesn't it. mean why well, i bring a rod well, bring a cage yeah. Yeah. No, it doesn't mean that whichever way don't you want to allow them to, if yeah. i grab you know what you're going to do i have a two-year-old almost 23. the rod i will use for him was i take his tablet away from him it's it's not, that's a rod <laughs> You take away their, yeah. their, their gadgets, you, you, it works out you're them. them. It works. They're right to destroy them. So, so, what are you going to do without the phone? So between me and him, between me and him, that is his own rod. Yeah, that is his own rod. So, do not take the Bible in the practicality of no, what it is. No, no. You, as a parent, it infuse it to your own situation yeah. and how it fits you. And how it but works. the truth is that mm -hmm. discipline is something we cannot run away. Yeah, it's just a style of discipline that will differ from one home to another. Yeah, okay. But discipline is something we cannot, as in not in block letters, we cannot run away from in raising mm -hmm. of good and godly children. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. <laughs> this has been great. Um, so I just want all our viewers to take in some of the points we've made. And also, as we're rounding up, I want each to say something in 30 seconds. Okay, so this activity I'm gonna do is a little different. I want you to speak to parents from a child's point of view, because you're not a parent yet, okay. just from your own experience. Okay. And then I want you to speak to moms, 30 seconds, and I want you to speak to dads, 30 seconds. Because you both have roles to play. It's not just a one person, it's not a mommy role, and it's not just mm -hmm. a daddy role. It takes two. Mm -hmm. Ready? Okay. 30 seconds. I am ready. Let's go. Okay. Parents, you're doing a very good job. <laughs> no matter what anyone tells you, there's no perfect way to raise a child, mm -hmm. raise a son or a daughter. Whoever, however you were raised and however you see how everyone is getting raised, you're doing a good job. There's no advice I can truly give you. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you as a child from Nigerian parents that mm -hmm. were born and raised in Nigeria and being in the Western world now, um, it is difficult. I know a, a child doesn't, you do good for a child, they, they might not show you their appreciation, mm -hmm. but trust me when I say a child is always appreciated. Um, you have to keep pushing. Don't, don't feel like you have to give up. Oh, this child is, this child doesn't want to listen anymore. Don't, don't ever feel like that. The child is listening. So you can educate them as, as best as you can. Do not feel like you have failed. No matter what, there is no such thing as a bad parent. Keep trying, keep pushing, keep trying. Thank you. And as a young Nigerian woman, I came to this country as a child. One thing I would advise Nigerian parents that are raising their children in Western culture is, you're still a parent, but draw your children near. You can use one hand to discipline, but use another hand to draw them near. Outside, society shouldn't be able to teach your children all that they're gonna know or what they're going to be. It should start early on in the household. And as parents, yes, you're doing your best, you're providing, but providing and working all the time isn't all that we need. 
in this whole journey of life, children still need their parents to be present and in every aspect, not just financially. And in terms of putting food on the table and giving us the house, that's great. We're appreciated when we thank God, but we want you to be present in our personal lives. Tell me, yes, that having my menstrual cycle is normal and that it's not only just a guy touching me that's going to get me pregnant. Start talking to me about things. Start talking to me about my feelings, how, you know, my hormones. I might want to experiment with something, but instead of shying away from it or yelling at me about it, just tell me that this is a normal thing of life. It's going to eventually happen to you. But when it does happen, think about X, Y, and Z. You know, in, inculcate that into the household early on so that when that opportunity presents itself very early, I won't want to enter it. Thank you. Okay, moms, um, kudos to you guys um, and everything you do. We see you, even if the world doesn't appreciate what you do. I know from a mom's perspective that mothers are gold, mothers are God. Yeah, that's how I see moms. It's not always... Um, is nobody really knows what they're doing this whole thing called parenting we are all trying you know mm -hmm. don't be too hard on yourself be patient with your kids i get life gets very difficult it's very hard to juggle being a mom and life generally but don't vent don't pour your frustration on your child take a breath it's okay to just shut yourself out for a while go into the bathroom go outside take a walk get yourself and then come back and address it if you are feeling too tense or Whatever is going on around you, just please do not traumatize your child because of the things you are going through personally. It happens most times. I know you're still a good mom. You're doing your best, but at the same time, please, for the sake of the children, because you know what? They love you. And this is the time, that the formative age is the time when you can actually grow and form that bond between yourself and your child. Because once they are gone... If you weren't able to build that love and um, relationship between both of you right now when they're young, it's an older age, maybe too late. Some people, well, for some, they must have a second chance, but for some, they never get it back. That's right. They never get it back. All right. As I call the spade a spade, <laughs> that's a diamond. We don't get celebrated as much as we can, as much as we should. But the truth is this. <laughs> The most important part of every society is the family. If you see a society that is good, it starts from the tiniest nucleus, which is the family. And the most important aspect for a family to start is the father. That importance cannot be overemphasized, even though for a lot of times that attention is not given to us. We don't seek the attention. We are behind this, the scenes, making sure everything works out. Now, irrespective of the culture, I would always go back to the Bible, which transcends every culture. Mm -hmm. and it says, train up a child. The act of training up a child is not just left to the mother. The father also has an integral part in that training up of the child. Now, you would always not be there because as a responsible father, if you are always available, then you will not be able to provide for that family. So it's a two-way thing for the father. That's, that's what makes our position very dicey. It's either you are out there providing and your presence is not felt very, very much or your presence is there felt very much and you're not out there providing. For you to provide for your family, you have to be out there. It makes it very dicey and very difficult. A lot of fathers cannot combine the two together and be a perfect father. However, as much as you can, your presence should always be felt amongst your children because if you want your children to grow up and become better people in the society they need that which you provide for them and your physical presence you have to be there with them talk to them the fatherly voice the stern fatherly voice should always be there when they go out and meet these temptations that voice should be behind them to say that father that says come here boy come here don't do that that voice should be recorded in their subconscious to know that I cannot go out there and bring a shame to that. This is my last name. Mm -hmm. That is that is what the regular African parents always tell you. <laughs> Do not bring shame to this name. Mm -hmm. And that is the things that we held as growing up African kids that made us stay straight. We mm -hmm. never wanted to bring shame to our so family true. name. Back to that, our father name. As much as you want those kids not to bring shame to your 
to that name, you have to straighten them up in the path that they should go. But like I tell you, just do what you have to do. Do what you're supposed to do. And like the Bible says, once you have trained them that way, they will not depart from it. God is faithful and able to ensure that once you have done your part, He will take care of the rest and He will make sure that they come out the way that you you and Him, God, wants them to be. That's right. That's true. Well said, panel. Thank you all for joining us today. And parents, remember, you want to build a bond with your children, open communication, and remember, broken children grow up to be broken adults. And our society cannot thrive off of a bunch of broken adults. We don't want to keep repeating the same cycle over and over. Until next time, watch out for the second segment of Sex Education and Parenting with a subject matter expert. So stay tuned and thank you so much for watching Civic Entertainment Gossip Television. And remember, as always, I see you. I see you. <laughs>